Welcome, this is Kevin from the Digifab Lab and Workshop in the College of Design with a little tutorial on using Rhino Nest to slice, orient, and uh, nest a three-dimensional object to prepare for laser cutting or CNC machine. So here we have a uh, little landformy looking thing, looks like contour site model, um, and we're going to use Rhino Nest to slice it and dice it and reorient it. Um, Rhino Nest is a plugin to Rhinoceros. Works best to have a Rhino model to do this with, uh, to have a single closed polysolid. Um, however, you can make models with uh, SketchUp or Blender or any other 3D application. Open it in Rhino and use Rhino Nest to, uh, to do this. Rhino Nest is available in the CDES Rapson Hall Computer Lab. Um, or you can buy it and use the eval version for a little while. This plugin to Rhino is quite has some similar functionalities to the Slice plugin or the Slicer plugin for SketchUp, um, but in my opinion, it's a little bit better and it keeps you in Rhino if that's where you've started. Um, so Rhino Nest has quite a lot of functionality. All the tools are arranged underneath the Rhino Nest tab on your menu bar. Um, various options, listing, slicing, orienting. You can remap objects. You can check curves to make sure they're closed, which is important if you're going to see and see route them. Um, raster to vector, it does uh, like tracing of raster images. That's a bit buggy the last time I checked it, but it's certainly worth a look-see. Uh, so, okay, here we go. You have a model here. Um, when you use Rhino Nest to orient parts, it's going to move them to X0, Y0. So it's a good idea to move the object that you're going to nest or slice off of the origin in order to, uh, so that's not in your way later on, as you'll see. Um, you can get to Rhino Nest command either through its pop-up toolbar, which may or may not pop up when you open Rhino, um, or through the tools header here, um, or just like any other Rhino command through the command line. In this case, I'm going to slice. You can see Rhino Nest slice 3D option comes up. The default um, axis on which Rhino Nest is going to slice is the z-axis. Um, however, if you're in your right or front viewport, you can also slice along on those other axes. Tolerance is basically how close to your three-dimensional model it's going to slice. That seems like a good number to me. Um, you need to select your object. Hit the next button. The object height is indicated here. Um, and the first thing it's going to ask for is the thickness um, the distance between the contours, which is going to correspond to the thickness of the material. So in this case, we're going to use 8th inch MDF or cardboard or whatever. Um, there's some options to create a solid, to create a top and bottom contour, or to create intermediate sections. Use them as needed. Creating solids can be useful if you're going to the CNC router, as can creating top and bottom contours. So um, we're going to laser cut this, so you don't need to create solids, you just need a single lines. Hit the Compute button, and uh, Rhino goes through a script, which uh, slices your model, as we can see here. So now each of these represents a contour that's an eighth of an inch apart. Again, hit the Next button. Um, this offers you the option to make a list, um, basically to label your part. It can either be uh, sort of thick text or single line text, which is very useful for laser cutting. So if you're going to label your parts, use this single line text to label them. And you can define the size, um, probably big enough to see, but not so big that you're getting in your way. So we'll go with 3 tenths of an inch. Next button. There's some preview options here. Um, generally, it's going to be easier to see what you're doing if you don't show the object. Base curve is just uh, the curves. We're going to leave those visible. Internal curves is um, if there's a slice that is 
inside of your model, which in this case we probably don't want that curve to be shown. You can either delete or keep the original objects. It's useful to keep them, I think. You never know when you might use them. Organizing in layers will just make a layer for a rhino layer for each of these vertical slice layers. Um, that can be, again, very useful for CNC machining later because it makes it easier to select layers one at a time. Um, if you hit this one by one mode, it gives you the option to um, make adjustments for each one of these contour layers. And by just hitting the plus button, you can scroll up through your layers, sort of preview what they're going to look like. Um, you can see where that text label is going to end up, and you can easily scale that text label by clicking on the text up or down button. You can rotate it if you need to. Oops. Boy. Even though the rotate button has two directions, it only appears to go one direction. Um, and you can also move it. So you might move this text so that it's in a place where it's not going to uh, be exposed when you stack the next layer on top of it. So we're just going to go through these. These labels correspond to the contour layer. Um, and then sheet number on that contour. So if slicing it created more than one part at the same level, um, it's going to be part one, two, three, etc. Go through these quickly. Leaving these parts where we're not going to get in our way. Not an instantaneous process, but pretty simple. I don't know if SketchUp's Slice plugin has this functionality, but it will definitely make it easier to put the parts together later on. It may be possible to use that top and bottom functionality to um, create engraved lines that would represent the next layer that's going on top of this. I haven't tried that, but I, I would think it would be a way, an easy way to reference or index where the layers are going together after they get cut and go to glue them together. So I have to extrapolate where the next layer on top is going to go. And doing this a little bit of guesswork. Um, you can certainly move them after you reorient all these parts. Looking in a way for layers. Which might actually be easier to do if I were in the top viewport, but that is fine and stick with it. So there you have it. 14 layers total. Um, I probably want to delete this text layer so that I don't have a number on the topmost section. Um, hit the finish button. And voila, Rhino Nest takes all of your layers and uh, lays them out on the zero axis, neatly arrayed, and you're ready to go on to the next step, which is nesting. All right, so nesting these parts is going to be moving them onto sheets that are the appropriate size to fit into the laser cutter. When I do this, uh, Rhino Nest is again going to move them to the origin. So it's a good idea, once again, to get your parts off of that origin. Created that internal line anyway, which I don't want. Um, Rhino Nest does group objects. And we're going to keep those grouped until we nest. And we'll have to get rid of that blue internal cut later on. I suppose it wouldn't matter um, if it laser cuts. It's just going to be where it is. We want to keep these group for a while um, because you're going to use that in the nesting operation. So now nesting is going to be optimized object position here or back in the toolbar or on the command line. Select your objects. Crossing window to grab all of those. This previews the number of each piece. You can go by, if you wanted to make 20 of these, you could change this quantity to 20, and it will nest 20 of each of those parts. 
you can either do all of the objects at once, or you can go through and uh, arrange each object individually. This can be useful on a CNC router. You can assign various uh, parameters for each of these parts. In this case, we're going to apply the same parameter to all of them. So we just hit the next button. It's going to ask for the sheet size. If there were a piece of stock in our model, that was the size that we uh, we're going to use to cut it out. However, if by using a unique sheet, we can just hit next, and it's going to ask us for the size, the x, y dimensions of the sheet that these are going to fit on. Um, enabling multi-sheet will uh, fit it on as many sheets as are needed to fill it up. Hit the next button. Um, this is where you define the parameters. As I previously indicated, you can also do this piece by piece. In this case, we're using the same parameters for all of the pieces. Um, number of variables here. Item to item is simply the distance apart. Since we're laser cutting this, we can actually have this at zero. Doesn't matter if they touch one another. In fact, we're going to use that to our advantage in a bit. Item to sheet is sort of your margin around the outside. For laser cutting, a tenth of an inch is good. This item to item is important if you're using the CNC router because you want to be that that to be at least the distance of the tool that you're using. So if you're using a three eighths inch router bit, set that to like 0.4 inches, or a half inch router bit, set it to 0.55 inches. If you have parts exactly the distance of a router bit apart, it will not uh, think it can go through them. The nesting time per sheet is how long in seconds. Rhino Nest is going to think about it, and the higher this number is, the more efficient, theoretically, uh, all these parts are going to fit together. Freedom is the amount of rotational freedom these parts get. Since this is going to be made of MDF or cardboard, it really doesn't matter, and generally if you give it total free rotation, it'll fit it into these parts with the most possible efficiency. Most of these other ones you can ignore. There's quite a lot of parameters about where it starts, where it ends, criterion for each part. I usually ignore most of those. Distance precision is how close it's getting, and that's pretty low precision, so I'm going to increase that to 50 thousandths of an inch, and that will give us accurate parts. Optimizing polylines will uh, take your polylines and make them smarter. Automatic nesting would fit pieces inside of pieces, so if you have a void in the center of a part that's big enough to hold another part, um, it'll dump that part in there. We don't have any of that in this case, so we're going to leave it. We can delete these originals. Um, I generally tend to try to save them because, again, you never know when you might need them. Hit the next button and the execute button. And Again, it's sort of calculating how many pages and the number of pieces. Seems to be thinking longer about this than it ought to be. Okay, I went back and tweaked those parameters. It looked like something out of whack. It didn't like the total rotational freedom, and it bunched some parts on top. So here I hit execute. Nests your parts. Nesting successful, and uh, done now. So it gives you a report of how efficiently it nested all your pieces. I changed the rotational freedom to just the 90 degrees, so uh, that sort of cleared up some of those issues. You can save this uh, efficiency report if you want, or export it. Once you're done, here we go. We've got all of those layers, what, 15 layers of cardboard sheet nested onto just five sheets of cardboard. So, very useful thing. Now you could just uh, simply take these and export them to the laser cutter for the template. Or, since each of those rectangles is the uh, same size as the cardboard that we're going to laser cut them out of, you can just set the properties and ungroup them in order to adjust them, it looks like set the properties to the proper line weight and line color for laser cutting, and you're good to go. So that's Rhino Nest slicing, orienting, and nesting. Thanks. See you in the shop.